George Washington, Napoleon, General Patton, Charles Dickens, Voltaire. What did these historic and iconic figures have in common with the World Bank president, the founder of Facebook, the president of the International Olympic Committee, a Grammy award-winning singer, the producer of Gravity in the Harry Potter films, and a long list of other luminaries? They were all fencers. It's a game that unless you have self-control and discipline, you cannot be good at it. The chess match, the figuring out of things. It's the closest we get in any sport, martial art, whatever, to trying to kill somebody even though it's one of the safest sports I've ever known. I think it attracts passionate people, people who have wonder about the world and about life, people who have the ability to be disciplined, to achieve, to plan ahead. And I think it also attracts people that I'd want to make sure were on my side. <laughs> why so many fencers that retire are successful in, in all other walks of life. Because they've figured out how to focus and adapt to situations so quickly that when you go into the real world, it's easy. All that competition, all those years of struggling to make teams and figure out how to win, and when you get into a professional environment, it somehow makes everything seem a little easier, a little less scary, a little, you feel a little more like you're gonna figure out the answer to whatever the problem is. Fencing has a set of rules, has a set of protocols, all of which are necessary to understand if you wanna be an observer for fencing. The sport takes place on a 40 foot long by four foot wide area known as the strip or piste. In the sport of fencing, there are three weapons. Foil, which is a descendant of the court sword used to train for duels. Epe, which evolved from the 19th century dueling sword. And Saber, the modern day version of the slashing cavalry sword. Foil and Epe are thrusting weapons, and one can only score a touch by striking the point of their weapon in their opponent's defined target area. Foil is governed by the rules of right of way. The fencer who starts an attack has the right of way. In order to avoid being hit, the opposing fencer usually attempts to parry the attack, and if this is successful, reposts. To score a point with foil, the fencer must hit the target area of the opponent, which is the bib and torso, front and back. When touches occur at the same time, the referee determines which fencer has the right of way. In Epe, the target area is the entire body, head to toe. Touches are awarded solely on the basis of which fencer makes the first hit. In Epe, there are no rules of right of way regarding attack. Any hit which is made is counted. Also, double hits are allowed in Epe, although the hits must occur within a millisecond of each other. In Saber, points are scored not only through thrusting with the tip of the sword, but by slashing as well. The target area in Saber is anywhere above the waist. This includes the mask and arms. Like foil, Saber is governed by the rules of right of way. Because the action in fencing is so fast, touches are transmitted electronically. When a touch is made to the target area of the opponent, a colored light will come on to indicate which fencer scored the point. In foil, if the touch is off target, a white light will appear. These have just been a few pointers to help make your viewing of this lightning fast sport more enjoyable. Because fencing requires both intellect and physical ability, the discipline required is probably greater than most other activities. I think skills that are learned there are transferable to anything you do in life.
It is fair to say that fencing helps people to become successful in life, absolutely. Fencing has such an incredible impact on my present life. It's, it's hard to imagine that I would have anything I've got going on without it, to tell you the truth. To be able to think on the spot, what do I do next? What's the situation I'm in? How do I pivot? I think fencing just ingrained that in me. You have to consider every little nuance that could hurt you or distract you. It takes supreme focus and quick decisions. It translates over into my real life. I find myself thinking about fencing whenever I'm uh, confronting problems in my own world. In a way, to be a successful guy running the bank or trying to influence the president of the country, you have to have a strategy. Yeah. Timing becomes important when you introduce things. So all the elements of good negotiation I think are in fencing. The one thing that is very important about fencing is that it makes you think. Uh, it's a thinking person's sport. Fencing is a constant problem solving opportunity. When you solve problems for yourself, it allows you to solve problems in other environments. So I think it teaches you how to mentally organize yourself and prepare for, for different possibilities. It's a game that you mostly have to figure out by yourself. So there's nobody else out on the strip to help you when you're holding the weapon in your hand and you have to defeat or be defeated by somebody else. If you enjoy that, you're competitive. If you're competitive, you want to succeed at pretty much anything. And if you are able to do that under a lot of pressure and in a game that's very mentally demanding, and I don't think it's terribly surprising that people find a way to translate those life lessons into professional successes that are maybe different than what other athletes might find themselves able to achieve. The attributes of a good fencer can be very diverse because there are three different disciplines in fencing. And those different disciplines attract very different personalities. I love that bay. I'm very cerebral, so you know, to fence a weapon that involves like a lot of strategy and um, you know, very painstaking movement and calculation, I uh, I really enjoyed that. So uh, I, I think it's a perfect match. Well, I actually fenced three years of Epe, and my high school team graduated, I think, majority of the Sabre line, so they needed a Sabre fencer, and I reluctantly switched. Sabre is so much better suited for me. It's a lot faster, more aggressive. You know, I, I was like an okay Epe fencer, I wasn't the best, so I definitely found my calling in Sabre. There are so many different styles and uh, so many different personalities. Uh, look at me, uh, with uh, uh, my size, uh, you would not expect uh, to have a, a good fencer. So uh, you, you have to, to make up uh, with other uh, capabilities uh, for this. I think it is in fencing, like in real life. Uh, you have to be authentic. One of the great attributes about fencing is you don't have to be a certain kind of person. You don't have to have a certain mentality or a certain body type. I'm quite short for a fencer, but I was able to use other attributes. Um, I got really good at protecting my back. And I was good at using distance. So I think you can create all these different scenarios for yourself to become a great fencer, a great champion, using your own attributes. Aladar, my old coach, used to say, harden the practice, easier in the battle. For me, fencing represents a training in discipline. How to control yourself, what is involved in the preparation, for which there are no shortcuts. I think what fencing did for me is that you have to learn how to push through things. You have to learn and you have to practice overcoming obstacles in front of you. It's a learned skill. You can't just arrive at something and think, okay, today I'm gonna put my best foot forward. It has to be practiced day in and day out. 
you have to build up all these little skill sets in the gym and then let it rip when you get in the competition or in the in the sales pitch or whatever it may be. For every success, you have to, to work uh, before, uh, you have to train, uh, you have to show discipline. It's a sport that takes uh, extreme discipline, a lot of training. And describe this chest with muscles. You need physical ability to perform the task, but also you need the mental ability to outthink your opponent. People talk about it as being a sporting chess, and there's an element to it where you're trying to outwit your opponent. Fencing is sort of one of the most intense experiences because you're moving at a high speed with a lot of physical intensity. The moves themselves are very subtle some of the time. And somebody else is trying to hit you the entire time that you're trying to work do that physical, mental problem solving. <laughs> Lastly, the thing that I also find amazing is that at the highest levels, the two competitors know each other very well and they know that one's gonna present this and think that and show the other one this and they're expecting you to do this, but maybe you'll do that. I think it makes the game incredibly fun to watch. When you're on the strip, you have to process information so quickly. You're getting information from your entire environment. Subtle changes are happening. You know, maybe the guy, you know, he changes from being aggressive to defensive. Um, he's stalling for time. All these types of things you have to process and sort of like, you know, make tactical decisions on. So I think it really just sharpens your mind in that way. Every time you come and fence someone, there's always different things involved. Your nervous system, you look at the opponent, there's so many different ways to beat the opponent, there's so many ways to lose. So the speed of the sport is one of the great joys of the sport if you're an athlete, but it's really one of the great challenges of the sport in terms of getting a wider understanding and a wider audience. And what I've sort of told people is, you know, just enjoy, enjoy the speed, but just watch and think for a moment how hard it would be if you had to react that fast, that fast, that fast, that fast, over and over and over again with somebody who's very skillful. It just, what I tell people is just enjoy watching it. Fencing is the kind of sport that opens up doors. You become a member of an international fencing family, and wherever you are in the world, you just go into the fencing room, you say hello, and then you're readily accepted across ages and across background. I've made wonderful friends, I've traveled the world, and it's never ceased to interest me, and I'm still learning. That's not true of many sports, if any other sports. My understanding, at least from talking to admissions directors and so on, is that there are sort of three sports that colleges believe that if you've been successful in the sport, you will be successful academically and so on in the college. And those sports are squash, rowing, and fencing. They must know something, and there's a, a lot of correlation, apparently, to academic success and, and uh, fencing. I, I think your sport helps uh, the young people and helped me uh, the, because uh, again with, uh, with the sport you, you learn some discipline. I think you, you, you learn to learn much better. The intellectual process that you need to go through when you fence is very similar to academic work. You have to have a target, and you have to have sub-targets. You have to have a goal, and several uh, targets on the way to the goal. That's simple. The main thing growing up was like, you know, I'm trying to get to college. You know, we want to find the best way of getting to college, and preferably for free. <laughs> you know, scholarship would be great. And I earned a full scholarship at St. John. So when I was there, I said, well, this is it. I'm going to fence four years in college, and then I'm going to join the real world. Fencing uh, really helped me to learn and to study because it helped me to be able to focus uh, very intently. 
because a lot of people told me when I was in medical school that there was no way I was going to be able to do medical school and travel and fencing. But I think something that I've gotten from fencing is, you know, how to balance your time. When you're spending so much time, you're getting home at 7, 8 o'clock at night, that forces you uh, to get your work done, eat dinner, go to sleep, and do it all over the next day. So it really teaches you time management, and um, I, I know that it's a crucial life skill that I learned early on. I learned to use the skills that I developed in fencing to the skills that I needed to become a better uh, student and a better role model. With fencing, like, it just opened so many doors for me. Like, this is one of the most thankful things I have in my life, going to a great school, just because of fencing, all because of fencing, really. I chose fencing because it wasn't just about being an athlete. It was about being a thinker, a planner. Fencing taught me how to be competitive. It taught me how to, how to be a fighter and always fight to the end. But it did teach me a valuable lesson that, you know what, you're not gonna win everything. And before you can become a great winner, you have to learn how to lose. Because with losing comes experience. And with experience comes the knowledge that it takes to win. And when you lose, you learn. And if you don't learn when you lose, uh, you will not win. So you have to see each and every loss as something very, very interesting and a learning experience. I think the most important to learn from, from fencing is uh, that uh, you know how to deal with the defeat and victory. You learn uh, a defeat is not uh, the end of it all and the victory does not uh, make you superior to others. There are things that you learn from fencing that you can't get from anything else in life. Learning to adapt, learning to assess situations and quickly make decisions. You know, in fencing, you're thinking two or three or four steps ahead. And it's very hard sometimes in an intense moment to pause and think ahead like that. It works in business, it works in your personal life, it definitely works in sports. You take a lot of risks in fencing, calculated, but a lot of risks in fencing. And that's what it taught me to do, is to have the confidence and get rid of that anxiety and that butterfly feeling in the belly to go into something new, take on a challenge, take the risk and persevere. And so I think about fencing all the time and kind of reflect back on literally bouts that I have had. I have, would have not excelled in school, became a doctor, an acupuncturist, an athletic trainer. I think that um, where I am at in my life now, I would have never had had the chance to have had experience if I had not had fencing in my life. Fencing has given me the tools and the toolbox really to be like, okay, I know that I can push my body and my mind to certain limits and I can really learn how to juggle a lot of different things and work with a lot of different people. And I think that's um, a great part of the spark. I think fencing teaches you so much about yourself. There's something that teaches you how to trust yourself and uh, depend on yourself to make decisions in a very creative way. I have this background of always being a little uncomfortable and, and getting used to it. And I think that change and pushing yourself to the next step and always moving forward is probably the biggest gift that fencing gave me. I feel fencing definitely helped me learn. It completely changed my life. It, um, you know, one of the things I feel that really helped me in fencing is it's such a hard sport where even if you're going to five touches or 15 touches and you lose a touch, you can't be worried about what happened that touch. You take it, you analyze it, you learn from it, and you move on. I find even in the business world, it's helped me out a lot where you might have a lot of people that are just thinking about uh, something bad that happened on Friday where I look at it, I learn from it, and Monday morning's a brand new day.
what is it about fencing? Well, in my mind, the short answer is it's a sport, it's an art, and it's a science. It's a beautiful sport because it allows someone to hit their peak at a different age, a different time, depending on their body, and still being able to excel. Uh, what it is about fencing? Fencing is good for body and mind. It's clearly an individual sport. You're there on your own. And you can't blame anybody else but yourself uh, if you don't succeed. I feel like fencing is really all around me. Even though I'm not competing, it's still a part of who I am. So what is it about fencing? Uh, for me, it's about a sport that I think is very unusual in that a very diverse group of athletes learn a very complicated game. It takes a long time to learn to be good at it. It takes somebody who likes intense competition where it's basically you in a combat environment and where you're doing problem solving at the same time that somebody else is physically trying to hit you or defeat you. Um, and I think that creates a sport and it, it frankly trains human beings to do very interesting things and it's something that I've always enjoyed being around, being part of. What is it about fencing? I, it's hard to have one answer for it. There's so many attributes to it. There's the mental side, there's the physical side, there's the chess match, there's sizing up your opponent, there's staying within yourself, putting your best foot forward, bringing your body, mind, and spirit together and, and channeling it. And there's something about it that's intoxicating and addicting and exciting, and it kind of grips you. And I think, I think once you're a fencer, even if you're not training, you're, you're kind of always a fencer. <laughs>